Hi everybody, in the next screencast we'll be showing the basic usage of Spark locally on my computer and we'll be showing the usage of the Spark shell and a little bit of uh, the nice feature of the history server of Spark. So let's start off by showing you the website of uh, Spark and we'll go to the first demonstration let's say of the basic hello world of the big data world and uh, it's the word count. So let's start off with the terminal and we'll fire up the Spark shell. Uh, I have it installed locally in my computer so we'll type in Spark shell. We'll notify that we're using the master in local mode and we'll be using four threads. Here we go. We have the Spark running right here in the terminal and we can see that we have the Spark context available as the variable of SC. Spark context is what gives us uh, a way to manipulate and to control our cluster and uh, actually our cluster sums up to the local server running on my computer. And we can see the history server as well. It will be running uh, in our situation on localhost port 4040. And we can see that every everything about the environment and the executors and everything running locally here on my computer. It will be the same usage uh, while running on a big cluster. Let's go back to the command line and uh, let's start off with the input file that I brought. I took an article from the internet. You can see here we have uh, input.txt. Let's print it out just to see. We have an article, great. So let's go back to the Spark shell and read it to a variable. By the way, the Spark shell is implemented in Scala and we communicate and do all of the, all of the manipulations in Scala. Input file and we will be using the Spark context and its method called text file. We have auto completion as well slash tmp slash show spark spark slash input txt great so actually we loaded the data of the file into our rdd and uh, we manipulate all of the rdds and get them from the spark context and we can see we have a mapped RDD here. Great, so we have the file in our uh, Spark shell right now. And what we actually want to do is uh, do the word count. So let's create another variable called counts. And we will use the RDD and auto completion as well, input file. And we will do some basic transformations. So at first, we will use the method called flat map and we will split each line via the delimiter of space and then we map each word to the corresponding value of one and we'll store them as the tuple of word and one and eventually we want to reduce them by the key and to sum the values to get the amount of times we have each word. So we'll use the reduce by key method and we add both of the variables. Great, let's check. Everything seems to be fine. So actually we have another shuffled RDD returning back to us. So actually nothing happened until now because we didn't make any um, action, any physical action to get 
the the RDD is transforming. So if we watch the history server again, nothing actually happened. So let's see the counts, and we can use another method called to debug string that shows us actually the transformations made by the that will be made by the action that will be triggered and another feature we can actually take the counts and by saying that we will actually need to use it in the future we will cache it in our memory so we use the method cache okay great so let's save the counts variable as a text file we use another method of the rdd called save as text file and we will save it to slash tmp show spark and output just to see one action being made great so we can see that spark did some things and let's go to the directory and we can see the output directory was made let's go in and we can see the Hadoop file that was created the underscore success file that says that the job was made successfully and we can see two part files the same as the Hadoop format and let's print them out let's say the first part part 000 and we can see the word and uh, each word has the amount of times it was in the document great so let's go back let's go back to the spark shell and let's say i don't want to hold the the action or actually the output in two partitions because we we saw that there were two different part files so i want to repartition the data and let's use the repartition method and let's say i want to hold five partitions okay great so the file was actually repartitioned so let's go to the history server again let's refresh it we can see the transformations that were made the save as text file and everything we can see the stages that were that were made and the storage we can see actually we have a mapped rdd here cached in memory great let's go back to the spark shell so what actually happened here we repartitioned the data so let's save it again okay let's go back and save it to output 2 great let's go to the directory output 2 wait something fishy happened we have only two parts here and we repartitioned the data so what actually happened there let's go back to our command line and we can see that the the command we did here was counts repartition but we didn't hold the new repartitioning at any other variable because rdds in spark are immutable so we made the transformation uh, mapped rdd was returned but actually nothing happened because we saved the old rdd so let's store it in a different variable wait a second okay let's write it let's store it in a variable called repartitioned and we'll use the counts repartition five. Great. So let's save the repartition file to a different directory. and we'll save it as output 3 great
Let's go to the output directory three. And we can see we have actually five part files right now. So the command was executed successfully. Another part that I want to show you is the unpersist method. So of course after caching the counts we want to get rid of the data that is stored uh, in our memory. So we use the unpersist method. And let's watch the history server for one second. At the storage we can see that we have the RDD here cached. And if we go back to the command line and use the unpersist method, go back to the history server and we can see that the RDD is out of our cache. Great. So we can see the, the power here that we give what they were given by the Spark shell is to do anything we want and we can do ad hoc analytics with the Spark shell. And uh, we saw the basic usage of RDDs and the Spark context uh, and what we actually can see in the history server with all of these actions. That's it. Thank you very much.